Good evening everyone, my name is Paul Young. I'm just going to do a quick video basically just to highlight an interview that was done on CBC and over the elections I'm actually going to do a bit more rebuttals in terms of video, quick videos, well five minute videos just to highlight concepts and show you where there's some flaw with the statement. So this this particular interview was with Michelle Rempel of this Conservative Party of Canada uh, John McCallum, who's the uh, liberal candidate in Thornhill, who's a former economist with the RBC, and Andrew Thompson, who's supposed to be the future finance minister. So basically, the guy came on to try to put his spiel on the the so-called election platform costing for the NDP. And you're seeing it right on your screen right now, where he's got corporate taxes, he's got income tax splitting, and then he's got some funding issues from jobs, infrastructure, health care in just vaguely areas where he's got something down below called a contingency fund. The key aspect is, is he came in to present this to basically, he says it's the framework. Well, the framework, if you're going to go into any budgeting process, would mean you would be providing some details of specifics of your key priorities. This guy was very evasive around the priorities and very evasive on how he would conduct actions that would drive the spending. And this is what I'm going to go into further down the sheet here. So basically, a couple of comments I have to basically call out Rosemary Barton on. First of all, she has it wrong. He, she basically said the economy is not growing. The economy is growing the second part of this year. So we'll see GDP group grow about 1.2% this year. Okay? She doesn't have that right. Basically, I went out to multiple private sector analysis, and even recently the uh, OECD has dropped growth down to 1.1%. So it's in line with what Scotiabank just did in September. So she's wrong there. So let's talk first about one of the key platforms, is daycare costs. Now, the line in the particular schedule that he showed is not really clear where daycare is. However, if you go back to different links that have got up here provided to you, you'll actually see that the the cost of daycare when it's fully implemented will cost about five billion a year and it's gradually phased in which makes sense that you would do that with any budget cycle but what there's a problem with quickly is that the NDP hasn't worked with the provinces and there's already been pushed back Liz Sandals has come out and basically said the Ontario government's not prepared to match funding on the the, the NDP fifteen dollar day daycare plan the second point that was a contentious point here, which was very narrow, and I don't understand why it wasn't called out more, was the corporate tax rate. Andrew Thompson was a former finance minister in Saskatchewan. He basically reduced corporate taxes in Saskatchewan. Now he thinks it's a good idea to increase it. So just to set the framework, now that he's running for ed federally, he thinks increasing corporate taxes right, but at a provincial level, he thought it was wrong. Second point is that corporate taxes dry business investment. You're going to hear a ton of thing about cash hoarding. You're going to hear a ton of thing about other aspects that companies are parking money on the balance sheet. In essence, in cash hoarding example, 60% of all money is held by about 30 to 40 companies worldwide. Most companies reinvest money over time. And if you don't believe me, you can go out and look at foreign direct investments or you can go out and look in the Stats Canada report and see capital expenditures. They have been growing each year. And if you take out the oil sector impact, there actually is growth. You are seeing companies redeploy cash back into their business. So it's a misnomer when you hear that statement. The second point is the $3.7 billion being shown does not reflect the fact that the small business tax will be cut immediately in year one from 11 to 9 percent which will drop the treasury by two billion dollars so if you can't get the small business tax rate right and he all of a sudden he's got this bump up of 3.7 billion how accurate is that 3.7 billion number I don't believe it's that accurate when I did my own calculation I estimated the impact from their their tax and it's conservative is about 2.4 million increases about 800 about 2.4 increase in one year now again there's other factors that go into that place so that number might be a little bit conservatively high so you have to take that number with a grain of salt and I'll give you a good example when they did the minimum wage calculation uh, in terms of federal jobs they overestimated that so anything the NDP does you can bet your bottom dollars overestimated the next point that I want to bring up is the contingency fund they got this big basket of contingency money my guess 
it's a part of when they start going through their platform to cost out more they're going to basically have more discussions in that well that's fine but you should be very clear what that contingency fund is all Thompson did was went around it and was evasive there's other two points that were never discussed around taxation one is the CPP enhancement yes it won't be reflected in the revenue Canada um, in the Canada numbers he's presented because it goes in a dedicated fund however it impacts business so if you're gonna hike corporate taxes hike CPP bring in a cap-and-trade system bring in more regulation you're double whamming business business can respond to gradual changes in policy but that's not what you get in NDP govern day one they're gonna bring in their radical changes and say business suck it up buttercup that's the goal the NDP's done wherever they've been elected is they force their mandated policies in day one no no business can respond directly they will respond directly they'll cut back business investment and they'll relook at how they do things and the NDP lives in this fallacy world they think that's not gonna happen the other thing that I want to bring up too as well that he was very evasive on in the plan there's about 200 million dollars for job action well the only two funds they've ever talked about were aerospace and automotive Okay. Yes, they're important, but there's no discussion of forestry. There's no discussion in the shipbuilding sector, which is supporting by the frigates and Coast Guard contracts. There's no discussion about food processing. No discussion about sustainable practices of how they're going to develop resources. There's no discussion on exports, which are one of the big drivers of the economy. So how much credibility does this document if he's not prepared to tell specifics of what's going to drive it? The next point I want to bring up is the health care accord. He was very evasive on that. He basically backpedaled. Initially, the NDP was pledging $3.6 billion in funding based on the Council of Canadian report that said that the health care system was starred. Yet, nobody ever goes into specific details of health care, all the way down to poor delivery when you get in Ontario, the waste at CCACs, or at the LINs. You never hear that discussion. That's a big issue. McCallum also has it right, and normally I don't support liberal policies, but McCallum nailed him twice on it first time he nailed in is the health accord is negotiated with the provinces basically what McCallum said is you're gonna force policies down to them okay just like you do with the oil sands and everything else so you're gonna become a dictatorship to help provinces in. you're not partnering stuff as much as Mulcair calls out Harper not working with the provinces Harper has been very visible going out the provinces and working with them whether it's economic or other policies you're not gonna get that with Mulcair. McCall's, Mulcair is a dictator he believes central government should tell everybody else how to operate. If you don't believe that, go look at his tendency and why he was removed as a Ministry of Environment Minister. He's, leopards don't change your spots. If you really want a clear picture of it, do some research on these people. They're activists, they're union reps, they're teachers, they're young kids. These are people that have no belief or understanding of economics or trade, have never worked in the real life in terms of know what it takes to compete. They're coming up with policies based driven by their roots of union policy or the agenda 21 If you don't believe me go do some search on what the NDP says on agenda 21 the next point I want to make about is income tax splitting he also has it wrong he's removed that number out the two billion number out what he hasn't been clear is that program replaced the non-refundable package of credits that help support families so you're not hearing that amount so that amount shouldn't even be taken out because it's almost offset by the non-refundable tax credit program and I did a quick calculation just on child deductions and it's about 1.5 billion dollar cost to the the Treasury and yet there's no comment on that so in essence it's funny watching Thompson speak this guy never deals with anything he didn't even have the daycare numbers which was a key platform he didn't go in specifics about the economy other than say that we were moving moving it back to 2010 well 2010 was a different era okay since then we've seen commodity prices drop we've seen different aspects of pressure on an economy what the economy doesn't need is a massive j shock to it and the NDP is bringing multiple policies that will be a shock to an economy economies cannot handle shocks in tur turbulence time as much as Thompson should thinks he can deal with that he cannot deal with that and that's what the thing you're getting with an NDP it's nice to put all this thing about social welfare and use the big buzzwords about that but the economy is driven by consumer spending it's driven by exports 
there's nothing in this platform that's going to drive that if anything it's going to reduce that down that put more pressure on those sectors and that's not something Thompson was clear on so when you make cast your votes I think you should really ask specific questions the validity of these statements by the NDP whether or not they're going to align to helping the middle class if this guy truly wanted to support the middle class then why is he pushing a package in his meeting and discussion with Rosemary Barton around the middle class he never did that what he did was was evasive around basically taxation the health care court he never once said this plan will support the middle class so if Mulcair wants to defend the middle class wouldn't you think that this guy would come up with a, a crib note to basically explain how he's how this plan would help the middle class and he did not do that